All right, hello everyone, and welcome to DK Vine Done Slow. As you can see, we are now eight hours deep into ukulele, still in the second world, of course. Took a week off, or, well, I took a week off to do the Not Halloween Scream Aganza, which uh, was, was just an all-day spookathon of Donkey Kong Universe games, the, the, the creepier bits in the DKU, uh, which was a lot of fun. And then we banked a holiday last week because uh, it was going to be the day after Election Day, and... You know, granted, election day lasted all week and uh, still being fought right now, but I uh, didn't feel like I wanted to stream that. But now we're back. We're back here in Glitter Glaze Glacier. And uh, where last I left off, it was in the Icy Metric Palace. So going to have to re head back there, but uh, no, there's a little bit more. Oh, well, that's not a good sign. The fact that I just tumble into the water right there. Uh, I know there's more I have to do out here in the frozen tundra. Hello to just Andre, who has joined us in a live stream. This stupid thing over here I need to do. There's a PG and a KG. And over here by I think it's the pirate snowman. Shiver E Timbers. Uh, Ray Day Pinball says, I must have missed part four. Uh, yeah, part four is going up on YouTube next week. Um, so yeah, this, I, I over, I've been overthinking this. I realized, because I was looking at the little dice platforms, whatever they are, and I'm like, okay, there's some sort of puzzle here. It's not a puzzle. I'm pretty sure, upon two weeks of reflection, it's just a jumping bit. I just have to jump. The wind was throwing me off significantly. See, I fell there, but I just, I just have to jump and I can get it. I just have to time it right. And unfortunately, I'm bad at video games. See? Terrible. Oh. Y you know when you start something and it's gonna t it takes longer than you were hoping it was going to, and then you're like, is this gonna be my entire day? I wonder, is this gonna be my entire stream right here? Just trying to get this damn page in a We'll see. Oh, we'll see. So do they stop moving? That's the qu That's the question. Do I need to study it? Am I just jumping in? I don't think it stops. I think I just have to catch it. Oh, it stopped over there! Yeah, okay. Does it stop when I move? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, so it, it's moving again. Okay, I think I got it. 
Okay, I don't got it. <laughs> this would be a lot easier if I had the, uh, the the flappy flight and I could just fly over there, but I won't get that until around the fifth world, so. Yeah, okay, I got it. Don't push me off. Thank you. I still have to get those quills, though. <laughs> those quills are not going to be f very friendly. Ah! Oh! I needed it, I think, a little bit over so it's not directly in the gust. And then the cage will open. I have to make physical contact with all four platforms for the uh, in a row for the cage to open. And I'm just using the quills as a guide now. That's it. That's it. I did it! I did it, and it only took me seven some minutes. Oh, come on. That was like two streams worth of trying to figure out how to do that. And there's nothing to figure out. I just had to do it. Oh, I hate being terrible at everything I do. <laughs> Alright, I guess I'm gonna go up to the Icy Metric Palace now. And get l hopelessly lost in there. Last stream, uh, for those who tuned in, you may remember I felt like I was coming down with something and I was freaking out thinking, you know, oh, it's COVID because it's 2020 and you have a tickle in your throat and you think, oh, it's COVID. It was, it was nothing. I uh, woke up the next day and I felt fine. So that was, that's an update on my health. I'm fine. But I think the inclement weather here in Glitter Glaze Glacier will definitely probably make me feel ill as the stream goes on yet again. I think it's all psychosomatic. All right. So here we are. Now you'll see the heat coming down from the vents now. That is a result of beating B Breeze Block um, last time. So... Now just which one do I go into? Oh, there's Vendi. That's exactly what you want to see as you walk into a creepy, floating, nonsense dimensional void such as this. You want to see the smiling visage of Vendi. Now, for those who tuned into the Halloween episode of The Conversation, and I mentioned my fear of like, barrier breaking, uh, the Isometric Palace definitely has that kind of creepy vibe. Oh, and now it's possessed the skull, of course. Because, like, this, this is all just a void here, a, a void in the wintry night sky, and yeah, it, it, I, I can push against it, I'm not going to fall through, but it's still, uh, it's still upsetting, it's still creepy. Breaking some barrels helps comfort me. I'm going to 
push forward here. I don't trust it. A any inanimate object in this world that can be possessed by the uh, googly eyes, I inherently don't trust. So, yeah, I can't push it over. Obviously, I need to get it over to the heat vent, so... Uh, but I'm sure there's something to be done in a later room. This is all just one big puzzle. It's all interconnected. I've already done all of that, and... Do I need to do it again, though? I don't remember. Ooh, sign. Uh, as I mentioned before, all of those signs are f Kickstarter backers who backed at a certain tier and got their names in the game. Other ways to do so, uh, you, you could supply a voice in the game. Which is where some of the voices in the game come from. I only backed at the tier where you were in the game credits, so me uh, and thousands of other people. Okay, so this is going to require the camo cloak, which I don't learn until around world four. So, ah, uh, and how am I going to remember coming back here? <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. So this this way is pretty much tapped out. I know I, I mentioned this before, but my name in the credits, and you know when I eventually beat the game, we'll watch the credits. Uh, but I'm sandwiched between all of these uh, people with the username Hylian, you know, from from off of Zelda. I'm gonna go this way. Hmm. All right. I'm sure I'll be back here 20 more times as I try to figure out the Isometric Palace. No, no, no! Yeah, possess the skull again. Okay. Well, ooh. It is just fun to watch you can Lele push a barrel around. Also, just interesting the design they went with the barrels in this game. You know, obviously they didn't want to make it too evocative of Donkey Kong. Uh, but it's a barrel and there's only so much you can do. So I like... It, it's interesting they just went with this really aged look on the metal rims. Interesting to me and no one else. Okay. I can't even see where I'd be jumping to. Oh, made it. Oops, sign. <laughs> I gotta read the sign. Alright, make your home accessible with Patrick Early stairs and lifts. No bridge is too far. Yeah. I hope Patrick Early really comes back 
in a future Platonic game and like influences the plot. And then we can look back at this and say, oh yeah, the stair guy. Oh, it's a, it's a Duke's temple thing. All right. Um, there it is, the very last one I open. So I can't aim. Nope, 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 nope. Yes, that happened. And, and yet, it. Okay. I, no, I didn't want to read Patrick Early's sign again. Um, boom. What do I need to do to reactivate this? Okay. Don't fall off the side this time. I'll have to remember that trick. I also wonder where these minion, uh, these corplet cut out helicopter targets came from in this mystical, ancient palace type place. And what do I get? I get a bridge. Oh, a bridge from Patrick Early perhaps. Oh, this is, I think, my favorite room. We got a little uh, Torchlight Trouble, Glimmer's Galleon kind of action going on here. So, we got a dark room, a pagey and a cagey. A weird, flooded pit full of skulls and barrels. Um... And then that's it. And, and then you're like, well, what what is this place? Well, this kind of a mini game show. All right, I, th I should be studying everything here, but like, do I need to count the skulls? I. I'm gonna get quizzed on what's in this room if memory serves me right and One of those things those really asshole questions that swanky would ask in the higher tier bonus bonanza questions like How many airplanes does Wrinkly have hanging from her classroom ceiling and you're like I wasn't counting the airplane swanky He's trying to rescue Donkey Kong all right, well, let's just try it. I'm not even going to comment on the uh, ice puns. Yeah. It's very Andy Robinson. Um... Like, bad puns for the sake of bad puns. The hallmark of his writing in this game. Ugh. So, I like, think about the logic behind this paging, right? In a cage, in a dark room, probably freezing, ripped from its book. And its thought process is, well, I would like to be rescued, but, oh, I'm far too valuable just to be a pagey that can be touched and, and collected. I could actually open this cage for them. I'm in a rare position where that could be a thing. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit here 
and ask them trivia questions to make me feel important and make me feel better about myself after having been caged. And if they fail, if they flunk my mega quiz, then I have to stay here in the cold, in the dark, maybe for all eternity. I don't know. I don't know how this situation is going to play out. Peiji is an idiot. And yet, I kind of want to explore his psych psychosis a little bit more. I want, I want to delve deep into his brain and figure out exactly how he got this damaged that he's not willing to accept the help that's right there before him. Uh. Alright, but your fake tans no way no way near good enough to be a quiz host. Do you remember when fake tans were the hallmark of a game show host and not, I don't know, presidents? Hmm. <laughs> I just had to, had to drink some of my hard cider when I said that. Are you in it to win it? All right, let's do this. God, it's so it's so blunt with its like yes or no, and it it just enormous, and I don't know, it just it just like. Well, if I say no, I'm going to have to eventually come back anyway, so let's just get it done with, game. Pipes in the water multiply by the number of vents, and you get... I don't know! I didn't count pipes or vents. Uh, uh... 12. Okay, so that was the wrong answer because I'm not insane. I'm not a mythological vampire who immediately starts counting things when I walk into a room. Oh, and, th and then I lost. And then that's it. That's it. That's, that's it. He just shuts me out. Alright, so... So th this is what I'm dealing with here. Vents! Vents! For Christ's sake. All right, so I guess that counts as a pipe. One pipe? Does that count as one pipe or two pipes? I guess that counts as one pipe because it's connected. I'm not a pipeman. I don't know how these things work. Because look, they look like they're separate pipes, right? But then why are they next to each other? So they must be part of the same piping. But I, don't, I don't know what goes on behind that wall. I don't know if they're connected. This game is asking quite a bit of me. More so, okay, there's a vent. That's a vent. That's another vent. Looks more like a grate. There's another vent. There's another four vents. Four vents. So four vents and I guess, wait. Pipes, okay, one, two, three. Those are pipes, but the, wait. Do those pipes count? Because that would be 12. So is that four pipes or five pipes? Ha! All right, let's go back and see. That's some sort of British joke that my ignorant American ass does not understand. Quills. Zero. Alright, I got one right. <laughs> Fuck you! What? Um. Two. Oh, I. I okay, that was right. That, I was just trying to use logic. Okay. Okay, pipes in the water. Got it. All right. Multiply them by the number of vents, and it was four, um, three, four, um, twelve. Unlucky. Hmm. 
the, this is, okay. This pagey. I hate him, but I love to hate him because it, he thinks there's going to be next contestants. He thinks that there are other 3D platform stars that are going to come through here and rescue him. And, and to what end? Because you can lately have, how many pages is it? How many pages is it? Uh, 23 on hand, but 35 altogether. So 35 of your brethren, brothers and sisters, have already been collected by this duo. So even if you are rescued by someone else, if goddamn Super Mario walks through that front door and rescues you, guess what? You're the only page he's gonna have. You're never gonna see your kind again. All right, were there five vents? Did I? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so five. It should have been 15. All right, how many barrels are there? One, two. How many crates are there? Or one, wait. One, two, three barrels, four barrels. By crates, I assume they mean crates and not treasure chests. Even though a treasure chest could conceivably be a type of crate. Alright, I'm just gonna... The first time I did this, when I actually was, was playing the game for firsties, I just guessed. I just guessed all of this because I didn't, I didn't have the patience. Yeah, Puker and Lacey, I didn't get it the first time. I didn't study on my UK quiz show quiz facts uh, and then come back to get your clever references. Right. Torches? Um... <laughs> I didn't even I didn't see torches Where are the torches Oh There's a torch Just one Or is there or Do you have a torch over by your face No No. Oh there's a torch there, Okay all right, I guess I'm back. Puker and Lacey. Yeah, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Let's do it. Entrances. One. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Last one. Torches. Uh, did I say three? Um. Shit. <laughs> he's, he's insane. Okay, I okay. He's won me over. I want a whole spin-off game about this weirdo. Actually, I want a whole franchise around this one pagey. I also like how, like, Dr. Quack, Dr. Quack's quiz, uh, it can have hard questions, but it's designed for you to easily get through, while this one, they could really just be complete dicks with you and and feel fine about it because it's just one pagey in the corner of a world I, I admire that in its own sick way all right 
So that's 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 a dead end now. So no not to go that way. Which is good because this is a pain to get through anyway. Ah! <laughs> that was close. That was pure dumb luck right there. Alright. Ah! Hate these googly eyes. Just, just trying to get my bearings so I remember. So there's this. Um, but I honestly don't know how to get this out. I think it's going to be in something in another room, so I'm going to keep moving. The Isometric Palace is very similar to Impossible Layers Overworld. Um... I'm just going to go this way. And I, I know I brought up, especially the, the toxic sludge here really reminds me of the latter part of the overworld when you're kind of in the castle area. But um, the, whole, the whole thing is kind of designed similar in a similar fashion where doing things in one room will activate things in another room and it's just one big puzzle and and you know it i think it works better in uh kind of the map screen environment that the overworld of impossible layer was versus uh this kind of detour from the 3d platforming that we've come to expect and like, like I said, I didn't really appreciate the Isometric Palace initially when the game was new. And it, it was hard for me to wrap my head around it. The, the sudden jarring shift was kind of unpleasant at the time. But now that I have some distance and I know it's here and I kind of prepare for it, uh, I really do like it. I think my biggest issue with it now is uh, just okay. Like Toxic Tower, I have to avoid the sludge. It, it does feel like so ethereal and dreamy at times that it is kind of disconcerting. Especially when compared to something like Tribal Stack Tropics or Ow. <laughs> Glitter Glaze Glacier is already kind of a, a gloomy, melancholy world. And then to go into this weird castle void, it's. Um, I don't know, it plays tricks on my brain. Oh, wait, I've already been through here. Was that a shortcut to... Ah. Did I not have to go through all of that when I could have just... I'm lost. Ooh, sign. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have to go that way at all. Yeah, the toxic waste management. Right. Okay. It's all about kind of 
getting my bearings and knowing, yep, okay. So that whole way I can't go through now. I have to come back here after the fourth whirl or sometime concurrently with it. Until then, I know not to come this way. And that's its own special kind of progress. Oops. Oh, yeah, I already read. I've read that sign two times at least during this stream. So, this way then. So, this way then. Ah, <laughs> uh, No, I'm not even gonna. No. Nah, no. Nah. Not even gonna fight them this time. All right, and there's Bendy. We are now in the the main foyer. All right, well there's a quill, so that's a good sign. Ah, okay. Duly noted. Go up here. Oh, hey, Rextro! Grading Rextro supply of butterflies. I also like the logic that Rextro moved into the Isometric Palace, and the first thing he did was put down his tacky 80s blacklight arcade carpeting. Um, I respect that, because that is something, if I had the, the means and the funds to do, I would do. If I had to live in this ancient, gothic ice castle, I would definitely want to spruce it up. Alright, so it's blocked off to me, but... that way and yeah so all right it's obviously the one that's rotating differently than the other ones unless that's what they want me to think in which case it's all of the other ones that form to create one play coin nah all right so I honestly forget what the uh, the Rextro game in this world is. It's not a good sign. I wish Platonic would uh, actually sell those uh, Rextro Neons right there. I would totally buy one for my office. Glaciators. Okay. I might remember this, but I'm going to be pretty terrible at this too. Because as far as the Rextro games go, I feel like this is one I, I've only played maybe once or twice. I'll check in with the live stream real quick. Froggy with Fry says, Hey DK Vine lads, still good that I missed your panel at MAGFest. 
This isometric puzzle area reminds me of Lumo. I think that was done by some X-Rare folks. I'm not sure. I know this is based on uh, just a lot of the output from Ultimate Play the Game, uh, the early, early days before they were even rare. And then Ray Day Pinball says, what's your headcanon for Rextro already having a play coin around his neck? Uh, well, either he has a play coin around his neck and that's one he doesn't want to part with because that's his own personal piece of jewelry or it's a replica play coin and not actually a legal tender in Rectro's arcade. All right, so this is just, I think this is just like those uh, crown battles in Donkey Kong 64. which uh, is as basic as basic can be, if true. Mm. Oh. Wah! This is actually very similar to a Mario Party minigame. And no, I can't remember off the top of my head which one, but the one where the, the tiles sink into the lava and you're like fighting the other combatants. So is that actually Nimbo, or is that just a Rextro Arcade simulation of Nimbo? I think the latter. It would have to be the latter. It's not, then, but then again, is this not actually Yuka and Lele running around? This is Yuka and Lele playing a game where Yuka and Lele are characters, which is the inherent nonsense of uh, that is Rextro's games that I brought up when we first met Rextro on this DK Vine done slow playthrough of yeah. ukulele. I didn't see what the high score was. Did I did I do anything? W was that enough? I guess I have to. I have to play them twice. As far as um, play control go goes, this Rextro game is not nearly as bad as some of the others because it's just regular game mechanics, so you kind of know what you're doing. Um, it, it, it's just, but it's also just kind of there. It doesn't really stick in your head nearly as much as Kartas Karting does from Tribal Stack Tropics. All right. So I've just got to get 14,000, which I did the first time around, but the game makes you play it again. Or Rextro makes you play it again, which I guess the game gets off the hook when they write one of their own characters to be hyper demanding. Of course, I can't do my reptile roll or, <clears throat> or any other moves that I normally could. Which in 
instinctively, I want to do that. It's weird to just kind of walk around. I don't even know how much the white feathers are worth. Oh. Okay. And it's just not the same when you're not fighting a bunch of Kremlins on a small metal plate. Unlike Donkey Kong 64, though, I think this nose is kind of uh, a time waster. And it's just made its peace with that. Where Donkey Kong 64, everything felt like padding. That's done. <laughs> uh, Dre is in a live stream and is screaming Hexagon Heat in reference to the Mario Party game that I couldn't remember. Yeah, that was essentially Hexagon Heat, but cold. <laughs> Lately, you should know what a cheat code is. Stop playing that fucking millennial card. Uh, I don't know anything. I guess it would be a Zoomer card now. Oh, I don't know anything. I'm so young. I'm just a little baby. Ugh. It's like we have the whole of human knowledge at our fingertips every single day. We walk around with it in our pocket. You would know what a cheat code is. I find it insulting that you don't. Quite frankly, it makes me respect you less lately. Learn the past or be doomed to repeat it. Ah, this is, oh God, that's terrifying. Oh God. Okay, I guess I'm doing this. <laughs> oh no, it just killed. Uh, I thought it was it would at least like push me and hurt me a little bit, but it just straight up kills me. It kills me right away. All right, all right. No. No! <laughs> I keep hitting the wrong button. No! Stop ground pounding. See, no, okay. I, I realize I'm yelling at the characters when it is in fact me controlling the characters. So really I'm yelling at myself. Okay, no. Why do I always ground pound? What is this defect in my brain? <laughs> oh, this is this is terrifying. This really is having this big smiley brick face coming right at you. You ever wonder though, like, because this game has been out for over three years now, if this little scene, this little part of the game right here, 
was somebody's first sexual awakening. I bet it was. Okay, no! <laughs> Whoa! I admire the way they get violently flung from the brick faces. Like, it's, it's hard to convey a sense of true pain and agony in a game with such, like, elastic cartooniness. Ah, there we go. Oh, have they stopped? Are you stopping? Can I just stare at you now? Can I talk to you? Do you have anything to say? Do you feel like you and your kind have failed? Is this going to, like, cause some sort of hillbilly, like, Appalachian resentment years down the line? Okay, well, thanks. Bye. Nice talking to you. I also like the red carpet. That's, like, why hasn't this been scraped up due to the dozens and dozens and dozens of smiling, googly-eyed brick faces that have been scraping against it? It should at least be much more frayed than it is. I'm crying foul on this play tonic. Hey! Okay, well, oh. So many paths. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. Okay, so that was that way, but where does this way go? I think ultimately they always converge into other spaces. Oh, I hear a pagey. Uh, this okay, so this is nothing for now. So why are is there a giant skull, a giant rib cage, and the little like arm bones? I mean, I, I get that this looks to be or was some sort of dungeon, but the fact that these are littered throughout the entire game, the Hamish skulls as I call them, I I really don't know. If that was, like, the only place you saw a skeleton in the game, that would be one thing. But you see it everywhere. Alright, what's up here? Was that Rextro? Yeah, that was Rextro. So, I guess I'm going back across. Ah! And I'm going up here now. I almost forgot about up here. Oh, yeah. Where does this lead me? This place. And I've already done this. I did it last time, so... Oh, I've got to read that sign now. You know, I'm sure I've already read it. Yeah, Eric Weekwall partners. And as I mentioned, Weekwall is Eric Weekwall's real name, so. I think this is the path to Bernie. But I remember there, I think there was more I had to do around Bernie, or through Bernie. Maybe I'm wrong. 
but I would rather waste time than miss something. And I get to read another sign. Yeah, Eric Sol Edward Solstice, painters. E Edward Solstice again, person's real name. And I don't know if that's what inspired Platonic to shove all those names in the, uh... Snow World or not. This is where... The Battle with Breeze block took place. Alright, yeah, so I got that up there. And yeah, oh, there, there is a door up there, though. Let me check this door. Aren't you glad you tuned into DK Vine Done Slow to see me wander around a rat maze? Oh, wait. So this is, uh... This is just the other side. Okay, that's just the other side that I activated last week. So I wouldn't have to go back over the piping again. So, this is all done. I'm done with this. I still hear, oh, there's a pagey up there. Oh, well, that's all it took. Let's just talk to Bernie. You ever... And I, I'm just asking this rhetorically. Nobody actually has to respond to this. But do you, do you just ever imagine what life would be like if you were somebody like Bernie here? And you uh, you just lived in this stationary existence in this one spot in the video game? And sure, sure, you might be moved later on. Uh, you know, especially if a sequel comes along or a, a side game. And you wind up there, and then, oh, somebody, like, took you out of the Isometric Palace and brought you there. It happened to Bernie. <laughs> happened to Lago in Mad Monster Mansion and Banjo-Kazooie. He was moved to Grenty Industries. But just, just stop and imagine this would be your entire life. And while it sounds boring and miserable at times, there's a certain stillness to it that... I don't know, after the very stressful year this has been, and quite frankly, the last very stressful couple of years, I, I kind of could see myself falling asleep at night just imagining I was Bernie, and all I had to do was uh, sit here with my insides burning. Okay, that didn't put out the fire. That did. I'm back here! I wonder if the, the water that Yuka is spitting out... Damn it! I wonder if it smells funny because he's vomiting it from his insides so I wonder if it like it's slightly tinged with bile
Like, it's not pure vomit. I'm not saying that, but it would smell reminiscent of vomit. Just a little bit, right? No! Ah! Well, I got a pagey out of this. This wasn't just a dead-end exploration. I did miss a pagey in the Bernie room last week, so... Or rather, I never gave myself the opportunity to get it because the scream ended. Okay, I got it. As long as there's not... Okay, there's not. All right. And I have no idea how much more of the Isometric Palace there is to explore. I have to go into the basement of the Isometric Palace, which is accessed from a completely different place. Back to the main again, okay, back in the main foyer, so yes. I'll go up here. Uh so I've already been up there. Is this just a dead end? Yeah, yeah, I've been up there. Of course, there's all of this just above my head. Oh, and there's the extender. Well, I know I can't do everything yet. Oh, but I can do this. Okay. Uh, obviously, the camo cloak section means I have to come back. So, even if I were to, say, move on to the basement, it doesn't mean I won't be coming back to Icy Metric Palace. Okay, I, I just got impatient there. So what I'm saying is it's it's fine if I leave for now. Okay, what the hell? There we go. Well, given how poorly I'm playing, that will come in handy for sure. <laughs> Alright, well, I think I'm going to go to the basement then. Unless... I've, I've, I've gone through all those doors. Okay, I'm just psyching myself out now. Let me, let me check my totals real quick. Yeah, so got all the Ghost Riders. I'm still missing the Power Extender, which might be in a basement. Obviously, I'm nine pages away. Don't have all the quills yet. But that's okay. 
the nature of the game is that I can't get everything now anyway, so. A lot of quills underwater, too. Oh god, I can't drown. <gasps> Though, I'm not gonna lie, I think Sea of Thieves has ruined my brain as far as how long you can Lele can hold their breath. So I'm like, well, how am I running out of water this fast? And it's like, oh, right, I'm not a pirate man. Oh, those marine corklets make a weird noise. Uh, interact with it. Wait. No, don't drown. Oh, God. Seriously, how do I... There we go. I had to get to the tip. Oh, I like how I'm still drowning even as this cutscene plays. <laughs> Come on! I mean, I guess that's accurate to... See, I'm gonna drown now! Nope. Luckily, I had that butterfly extender. Uh, is the whole front of it? Okay. <gasps> Oh, sign, sign, sign. They could have gone with a worse joke with that name. And, I mean, I'm sure Matthew Cox has heard it all, right? Just like Chris Alcock has heard it all, but... Over here, shit. Okay. Uh, so which way should I go? I could go down there. Oh, I guess that's maybe the only way that's open for me. I all the other doors that look like doors are actually just inhabited by those totem men. Oh, hey! Hey, remember this? So now we're on the other side of that, and it was actually connected to the basement. Hey. 
And now I can get up here. So they're just hiding in the barrels, but then I break open the barrels and they die. Ooh, sign. KG and KG. So, interesting to me, this uh, hot tub character looks like it's an adorned with the same stars that is uh, most often associated with Diddy Kong's shirt, right? The, uh, the, the yellow stars. Uh, also, though, a similar motif has appeared on Tootie Bear's shirt, Banjo's younger sister has appeared on sporting good equipment like the running shoes from Banjo-Kazooie, the predecessor to the Turbo Trainers, uh, and then some boating equipment in Conker's Pocket Tails. So it makes me wonder if this fictitious sporting good company also manufactures, licenses, I don't know, uh, hot tubs for athletes and their sore muscles. Just the theory. I'm just connecting dots where I see them. I'm gonna uh, walk around the rim of this guy. Just lightly caress the rim as I collect these quills. Nothing weird about this. Then I'm going to slowly insert myself into the pool. Tubs. No more bubbles. Oh, so I think I know what I'm gonna have to do here for tubs. Because there's no more gas in tubs. And I'm gonna have to uh, learn the fart move that Yuka learns fairly soon, but not in this world. And come back and I'm gonna have to fart in tubs. I'm going to have to fart in tubs. And then I'll get a pagey. Also, notice that there is a playing card motif on the underside of Tubbs, which makes me wonder if Tubbs was taken from Capital Casino. Ow. So many corporate captains out right now. Which, they're, they're the ones that you have to uh, do two hits on instead of one. That's what the hat signifies. There's bars there. Bars there. So I think, yeah, the only one I could go in was that one. Dude, I'm gonna have to come back. Help out old tubs. All right, well, where else is there to go? Is there anywhere to go down here? Or is this the extent? No, I didn't want to go out. Fine. 
Swim back through the hole. Right back through the hole. No, no, we're going back through the hole. I know this is a weird perspective. Just go with it. All right. So yeah, that might be it. Think so. It's just the back door to tubs. Ah. Not that there's really anything for me to do up there. Like these aren't doors. Oh, weird. Oh, that's neat. They want to go in, but they just can't make it in. Ah! Yeah. Oh, I do like the little, uh, what is that, a snowflake, like, fresco pattern on the wall? I never noticed that before. All right, well, it's probably time I leave then. No, not, not towards tubs, this way. I forget that's all there really is to the basement of the Isometric Palace. Is that a skull? Why? No, that might just be uh, a rock. It might just be a rock. I'm just getting paranoid. I'm seeing skulls everywhere. <laughs> well, okay then. Are there any more quills in the water for me to collect? That is Gloomy Jam Grotto behind me, so I don't need to worry about that. Wow, I run out of air so fast. Which I imagine is accurate for a lizard and a bat. Browser. Well, I think. Obviously, this doesn't look great. As you can see, Glitter Glaze Glacier. Uh, I still need six pages. I still need eight quills. Still need one of the ghost riders. Um, that's that's accurate, yeah. So let's go up here and check on the ghost rider real quick. I'm pretty sure I can't get the ghost rider yet, but if I am moving on, I want to be sure. I, I know I'm coming back. I know I'm coming back. Like it's not like this really matters because it doesn't this is just my own psychosis you remember that pagey in the cagey who could have been rescued but he put you can lay through all of that nonsense for what purpose just because he had his own damages to work through i'm the same way and i don't like to move on when i know there's something else i could have done even if it doesn't matter Ow. Wait, where did that treasure chest come from? That I cry foul. Uh, maybe I can get that with the grenade. I don't know. I'll try it. 
Ah! I don't know which parts are slippier, s slippier, slippy, slippier. That's a weird word. Slippier than the other parts. I know I brought pointed this out before, but I really do appreciate the fact that they have a nonsense exclamation for their floating platforms, and that they're there's they're, they're the little helicopter uh, devices on the underside of them. I mean, it, it makes no logical sense, and this world is already full of magic, so it doesn't matter. But it's a nice touch. It's not quite the level of nonsense absurdity as the Hellavines from Donkey Kong 64, but it's close. Oh no, that's the wrong way! <laughs> I, I panicked! I, uh... I, I realized it was the wrong one, and then I just... crapped out. My brain crapped out completely. <sighs> Dredge back up there. Deal with all these damn googly eyes that have respawned. Are they've all respawned? Or just the props have? Yeah, I guess just the props have, but still. I don't have to go up there at all behind the capital B snow sculpture. Now the googly eyes are bad. Are you kidding? Yeah. Don't know. Hey. Although that did ca he did eat that. Oh, these googly eyes are gonna kill me. Oh, that's the indignity of getting killed by a set of googly eyes. Oh, and I'm respawning out of the the water hole. That's just great. All right. So yeah, I I feel like. I have to use the spin dash move, like not Sonic the Hedgehog spin dash, but the ukulele version of it. I have to use that to get the, uh, the Ghost Rider free, so I guess I'm going to be exiting. Not that way, this way, the exit's over here. Got about 36 minutes left in the stream, give or take a few. So... Mash and pottery. Hopefully they tone down the googly eyes after this world. They're still a persistent threat, but I feel like this is the world where they really get showcased for whatever reason. I mean, they're still everywhere in Moody Maze Marsh, but... It doesn't ever feel quite this bad, where they're just giving you so much grief.
Hello to Gibbon in the live stream. Gibbon will be joining me on the conversation we're recording. And if you're a ukulele fan, uh, the, the episode will interest you. We're talking about the three upcoming cameo games featuring characters from Platonic. Two of them featuring ukulele and one of them featuring Trouser the Snake. And we're recording that tonight at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 p.m. Pacific. Nope, don't. Oh, that's too slippy. So slippy I can't get up there with the reptile roll. Ow. All right. Hi, Bendy. Just lurking in this corner like a weirdo. What am I doing? I have no idea. I'm just kind of walking up some pipes. But I hear something up here. Oh, there's a pagey. So I think I can just parkour up here to get it. Not bad. I really just love looking at the details they put in here. Like this thing. What is this thing? I don't know. Why Why is there a reel-to-reel -reel on there? Why? What, what do those buttons do? It's all nonsense, but it's just great little detail of this cartoony corporate factory hellscape. Did I already get this pagey? Oh. I, it's been so long, I can't remember if I've already gotten this. It would spit through here. Pretty sure I got it. All I did was just... All right. <laughs> Just a nice little shortcut back to the main area of hybrid towers. I, I do miss the dancing pages, though. It's, it hasn't been the same since they took those away on the loading screen. There we go. I want to point something out right here. We got some book titles here. Got um, key beats. Uh, hold on, let me get better position here. How to use hexagons in all of your home decorating. Capital B's guide to red nectar. And 
Uh, oh, uh, there's also My Way or The Flyway. And, uh, oh, excuse me. There's also More the... Is it More the Merrier? And then there is Fifty Shades of Games, which isn't clever. Uh, but the, the one I'm pointing out is uh, Jetpacks and Butlers. And Jetpacks and Butlers was a phrase they used to say back in the time of Rare. Uh, well, Rare still exists, but I mean, back in the time that the people at Platonic were at Rare. And so whenever, like, they would go on and on about, like, how a game would be successful, they would say, you know, it's just jetpacks and butlers for us from now on. Conquer in Conquer's Bad Fur Day, when he, he at one point in the game, he grabbed a wad of feho or uh, cash, and he said jetpacks and butlers. So within the logic and lore of the shared Donkey Kong universe, jetpacks and butlers is actually what Conquer is actually referring to is this book, this business book which is, would be kind of like one of these go-to business books in the Rare Archipelago, like uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or just you know, something like Douchebags Who Only Care About Money would read. And uh, Capital B has it in his little layer here, and that's what Conquer was referencing, that book. So I love long, long-standing things like that that become kind of intertwined within the fabric of the shared universe itself. Even if it wasn't the original intention for that line, it was just an in-joke. Uh, in-jokes can still become in-universe pieces of, um, of history, so. All right. So I think the pagey I'm hearing, because I'm up by tribal stack, yeah, it's this one, which I still can't get. Because I'll still need that uh, spin dash maneuver to get in there. So, we got the pagey from there. So I will head towards the third world, I guess. I hate making these streams uneven. I was I was planning on being in Isometric Palace for longer today. And wrapping up Glitter Glaze Glacier, at least from this initial onset of Glitter Glaze. But uh, the Isometric Palace didn't take as long as I thought it would. So I expected to get lost a whole lot more in there. But it is what it is. Alright, so... Huh. 
Where are those plants? Are right, the frost berries? Probably not over here, but... Nah, I doubt they're in Rexter's Arcade. Oh, they are! Well... Shit, alright. I wonder how Vendi gets around as fast as she does. She's also in the corner over there by Glitter Glaze Glacier. Alright, the archive. Got this platonic inspired carpeting here. I like where they put the the sign for the third world in this aquarium here. No fish in it, I don't see any fish. Oh, that's Jetpacks and Butlers again. There's so many copies of it. Alright, I don't know what I'm doing in here. The fact is, there has to be a reason to come in here. In the first place. Oh, there it is. It's... Press it! So I guess I need to... Do I need to drain it? Oh. Or is there a... Is there a bush for me too? Obviously, I'm not pressing it this way. They are stressing me out quite a bit. Alright, so we got ourselves another maze here. Which is fine. Ah! All right, well, that's not working out for me, is it? What? Okay. Oh, I hate this. I absolutely hate this. <laughs> My brain can't follow whatever logic it's trying to get me to understand. getting spit out in the same place. Hey. 
Ah! Now I just want to be down there with those googly eyes because it would be a different room. Oh wait, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I did it. Uh, tricky platonic, tricky. And now, oh, I got, I got, I got that entrance there. Oh, okay. See, I, I was overthinking the puzzle, and I didn't realize I could have just jump up there. Hey, there's trouser. Sweet. Of course, I want to like study all of the books here, but. Most of them don't have anything on their spine, thankfully, or else I would be here all day looking at this fictitious library. All right. Piss over here. Like every other character in this game. Hey, the buddy bubble technique. Okay, so now I got it. I'm just jumping in without thinking, and that's been my problem. Instead of studying the situation. There we go. Although, I, I do have a complaint about this. That was originally going to be just a sound of Yuka farting. And they chickened out. Or maybe, I don't know, Team 17 made them change it. Or I don't know, maybe the... ESRB or Peggy rating system made and change it, but either way, it was originally going to be a nice, hearty, warm fart coming out of Yuka's lizard buttocks, and they chickened out. And, um, well, you know what? I don't want to go to Moody Maze Marsh yet. I want to go back to Tubbs because my muscles are sore. It's been a very stressful year, and I deserve a soak in a hot tub. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to tubs now. Don't have the patience to deal with these corporate security bots. All right. But yeah, I, I do lament the lack of Yuka farting. Because, you know, Kazooie farts all the time when she shats out eggs. So I feel like it's perfectly acceptable in a game like this. Um, 
And maybe they just thought, maybe nobody pressured them. They just thought, you know, in good taste, maybe we shouldn't have this new character, this new untested character who's only been in tracky train to uh, express such volatile flatulence. But I think it's needed. Because other than that line of dialogue between Yuka, Lele, and Trouser, you don't know what's happening. You don't know where this bubble is coming from. And you might just skip over the dialogue. And I mean, now we know that, you know, perhaps Yuka's diet creates farts that aren't audible. And it's a, it's a silent situation with his farts. I imagine Laylee has some really volatile farts, though. And she doesn't care. The nice thing, too, about this fart bubble is inexplicably it means you don't drown. You, so long as you're in this bubble, you never run the, rust, run the risk of running out of air, which... I'm not sure how you have enough oxygen in here to sustain you. But it essentially renders the whole underwater. I mean, it, it goes away, but look, I can just create a new one. It essentially creates the, makes the underwater environments in this game traversable in a, in a 3D platformer sense, so you don't have to swim, which is nice because as much as I don't mind water levels, they can be slogs in 3D platformers, let's be honest. So this is kind of a nice workaround where, yeah, you don't really need to deal with it all that much. through here. the last one I pick. Alright, tubs. <laughs> I mean... A few tiny bubbles. How did that get out? Okay, how is Tubbs just working again from Yuka's, like, three little farts there? I mean, at least they acknowledge it. At least they acknowledge that you farted in Tubbs' mouth. I still talk to Tubbs? Tubbs! How, do you, how are you feeling, Tubbs? Yeah, I'll give you even more farts. Just for you. Tubs. That was nice. I've done my good deed for the day. I have farted 
in someone's mouth. Tonight when I go to sleep, I'll have that contentment in my soul and I won't have to imagine that I'm Bernie stuck in a stationary castle in outer space. No, no. My soul is happy. My soul is at peace because I farted in someone's mouth. It's a good feeling. So I imagine the remaining quills are somewhere up in the uh, the main part of the IC Metric Palace. I am just going to traverse the lake bed here. You never know. It's a lot easier to explore it now than it was when I. I could only swim down here. Some remarkably resilient bubble, too. Also, when Trouser said uh, a Grand Master taught him this maneuver, I wonder if that was just a line, if, if it was just a, a load of bullshit, or if Trou like s someone did teach Trouser this. And we know in Guard, somehow taught you can Lele swimming based on an impossible lair. So I wonder if somebody else in a DKU taught Trouser how to fart in such a way that you're encased in a bubble. Just us. And I wonder which character that is. And I want you to uh, leave your suggestions in a live stream chat. Or if you're watching this on YouTube later on, the YouTube archive, please let us know in the comments which Donkey Kong Universe character can fart in such a magical way. I guess I should leave. Oh yeah, look, I didn't point out that constellation before. Let's see if I can get over there. We got a, uh, a constellation that looks like Lely up there. Look at that. Nice little detail. I imagine it's not actually Lely. It, it is a another bat constellation in this grand tome, but um, obviously it's it's Lely from the out of universe perspective. Glitter Glaze Glacier. I don't know if it is... It's not my least favorite world. Why was that moving just now? Did you see that? It was like... Oh, I guess it's just my eyes are playing tricks on me. Glitter Glaze Glacier, I think, used to be my least favorite world. Now it's probably Moody Maze Marsh, which is the world I'm playing next, so buckle in, folks. Uh, but it, it's definitely grown on me. I think... I found the icy metric palace to be a slog, an unpleasant slog at first, because I wasn't expecting it, because it is so far different from what you um, you anticipate in a game like this, especially just so early on. But you know, having some spent some time with it and having given it the chance to grow on me, I feel like um, it's a it's a lot more fun experience the second or third or fourth time through. It's not to say I don't like Moody Maze Marsh either, it's just I think out of all five worlds, six including this overworld here, uh, I, I think Moody Maze Marsh is 
arguably just the most <laughs> nothing. Ow! Trying to explore. Leave me alone. I, I think it's the most, like, just their world. The world that has the least to say. There's plenty to like about it, too, and I'll be pointing that out as I play through it starting next time, but, um... So you see there's a pagey up here. And there is this... Slide here. Ramp. But I cannot traverse it. Unless... Where's the, the the honey? Yeah, okay. So why would that honey be there? Yay! I did it! I figured it out. All I had to do was coat myself with ooze. Which is how I solved most problems in my junior high days. So, he... I realize I'm reading way too much in the dialogue here, but he says he poached that last minion from another evil corporation, but Dr. Quack created the corplets. So, did a corplet quit Hyvary Towers, join another evil corporation, and then come back after Capital B offered him higher wages? Because I, I imagine none of the corplets have that much bargaining power to begin with because they were all grown in a laboratory. They're essentially slaves. I don't know. I just don't know. There's a lot of untold stories here in the world of ukulele. And I only hope that we get another graphic novel and, and other expanded universe so we can really flesh out all the little stories of like that one corplet that ukulele just bashed that worked for another company. How did that happen? So here are the waterworks and you see those lily pads floating in there and over yonder, I don't know if you can see those brambles right there. That is where the third world is. That is where uh, Moody Maze Marsh is. The tentacle world. <laughs> Signified by a tentacle. So, all you perverts out there, you're in luck. Because next time on DK Vine Done Slow, we might be seeing some tentacles. That's right. That's right. Uh, thank you everyone for watching today. Uh, getting back in a swing of things here. Uh, but luckily, I don't feel like I'm coming down with COVID-19. So, Thumbs up. I'm doing all right, all things considered. Uh, thank you to everyone who tuned in. Oh, Andre has just gone on a spiel about farts. Uh, given that there's nothing inherently funny about farts, and then in parentheses, quote, the human digestive system generates a gas gaseous waste product. Whoa! Crazy! Crazy! Having the characters uncomfortably allude to through dialogue is better than just spamming a sound effect every time the player needs to use one of their moves because the former is an actual joke. Well, I suppose that's a good point. I hadn't considered that. Um, although, 
in my defense, Andre, and in, in the defense of fart sounds everywhere, it's pretty funny, right? Thanks for watching. Uh, conversation live stream tonight for five dollar not patrons, eight thirty p.m. Eastern, five thirty p.m. Pacific, and that'll be going up for the patrons. If you're watching this live on Twitch this weekend, if you're watching it on YouTube, hey, guess what? It's already up, so you can tune into it now. It's called The Platonic Invasion, about all of the ukulele and ukulele character cameos happening throughout uh, indie games right now. So stay tuned. Um, thanks. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll be back next week.